Recently I learned that the internet does not have everything on it. And for example, I've been making kinetic sculptures for about 20 years and they're fairly complex and often involve, you know, thousands of moving parts. And when I'm designing them, I'm usually sitting at my drafting table doing math problems or drawing. And if I get stuck, I'll get up and pace around a bit. Now, pacing, as you know, is the art of walking back and forth while solving problems. But if you look online, there's virtually no resources about how to do it. And so I thought I'd make a video and it's really for beginners. So, you know, if you've been wanting to get into pacing and just haven't known how, then this video is for you. So the first consideration is the place. And it's like they say, location, location, location. It's probably obvious, but you want to choose a flat level space. Pacing on staircases or boulder fields will not lead to optimal results. A freshly sanded wood floor is nice, unless it creaks. The problem with creaking is that it might wake up other people in your house and they might request with distant voices that just barely graze the edges of your consciousness, bowls. with Cheerios and milk and the little slices of bananas about a quarter of an inch thick. You can try to ignore it, but in my experience, the requests turn into demands which grow in volume until they will break through even the most determined of pacing. And that's why I say, Wood is good, unless it creaks. What about the beach, you might ask? The light glinting on the water, the vast cosmos revealing itself through the clouds, the potential, the promise. But as you walk back and forth across the sand, you will invariably begin to play this game where you try to step exactly in your preceding footprints. And this leads to little hops, even skips, frolicking. This ruins everything. Your beach day is shot. You might as well just go home. Now, if you're an architect, and your spare no expense client has asked you to design a state-of-the-art pacing room, then I recommend a four to six inch substrata of medium density cement, firm, uniform, inanimate, capped with a superstrata of high performance, low friction, seamless linoleum. If you do this, your client will love it. But more importantly, you just might have your pacing room design featured on one of those social media sites with hundreds of thousands of authenticated followers. But today we shall not linger with such fantasies. Instead, We'll turn our gaze to the shape, the path upon which we walk. When you're just getting started, I recommend the rounded rectangle. Eight feet long and a one foot radius will allow you to transition between the backs and the force and the force and the backs without breaking your stride. As you gain experience, you can tighten the curvature and the path becomes a line segment of pure back and forth. The transitions reduce to fancy heel spins like this. But when you're just getting started or for general purpose pacing, the rounded rectangle is best. 
I've included a link in the description below where you can download this as a PDF. And I also have it in metric if you're into that kind of thing. And if you are into metric, I'm cool with that. You know, like totally cool. I want you to know that. So I'll give a demonstration, hands in your pockets, chin down 30 degrees. I'm gonna lead with my right foot. I almost forgot, which way do you go? Rotation, rotation, rotation. You want to strive for 60 to 65% counterclockwise when seen from above and 30 to 35% clockwise, unless of course you're in the Southern Hemisphere, in which case it's 60 to 65% clockwise and 30 to 35% counterclockwise. Okay. The reason that you're feeling disappointed with that is because we have yet to add the thought. Now, when you're picking a thought for pacing, not just any old thought will do. It has to be a weighty thought. It, it can't be like, well, what should I have for dessert tonight? It has to be something that you genuinely care about something with consequence. So for me, what a lot of times will work is the question of how to attach a piece of string to a piece of wood. I mean, you could drill a hole through the wood and put the string through and tie it. You could put in one of those little wire eyelets and tie the string to that. You could even drill a hole in the wood, put the string in with some glue and secure it that way. So many ways to do it. So few clear answers. So, you know, if you're thinking, geez, I really want to get into this pacing thing. But I just don't have a good thought. Attaching string to wood almost always works. Next, with some frequency, you want to talk to yourself. And when I say talk to yourself, what I mean is talk to yourself. Your mouth has to be moving. You must be forming the words. It will not work to be like, it won't work, but you don't have to shout. It should be more like a whisper. So for example, this is what I sound like when I'm talking to myself. I'm talking to myself. Can you hear me? And if you're not sure about the volume, then you use the 520 rule. Someone five feet away from you should be able to hear you. Someone 20 feet away shouldn't. Lastly, occasionally you want to take your hands out of your pockets and gesture as if you're trying to convince somebody of something of some great importance. Or if you're deliberating between two ideas, you weigh one of them like this. Or like this. Or like this. So I'll put it all together now. And when I do that, I'll probably become lost in thought and that will be that. And so let me take this opportunity now you know, to thank you. And let me leave you with this final thought. Don't be discouraged. You know, when you see me, you might think to yourself, how could he be so good at pacing? He makes it look so easy. But remember, I've been doing it my entire life. And I truly believe that if you practiced just 15 minutes a day, you too 
can learn how to pace like a pro. Okay, so here I go. Um, see you later. I think.